We're going to start with a little sing along. Are you ready? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Okay, stop. <laughs> now, at the 9 o'clock, it was a bit bad because it was early. Now, you have been up for a little, right? So I expect all of you to be more energetic and more youthful. Now, pretend that you had a double latte at Starbucks and you're all ready to sing. Are you ready, musicians? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Verse two. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Give yourself a round of applause. That's very good. I even saw some hand gestures going on. Very good. How many of you learned that song as a child? Many of us. This song was written in the 1920s. It is, in fact, based on today's gospel. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Your light must shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your heavenly Father. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Now, I don't know that it was written originally as a children's song, but most of, it, most of us learn it as a kid. By the 1940s, it was included in the major hymnals in the Protestant churches. And by the 1950s, it was being used in a new context. Civil rights leaders were using this song. We were stuck in a dark abyss of racism, and some brave individuals were stepping forward to create change, and they faced overwhelming odds. For what they did was right. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Now, I learned this song in the 1970s. I was very young, about four or five years old. And many of you in the room still remember when the changes in the mass happened after the Second Vatican Council, right? Remember, we were no longer doing mass in Latin. And when the priest now turned around and faced the congregation, some of you like that, some of you wish that the priest would turn back around so that you won't have to see his face. <laughs> there were lots of changes, lots of new energy, lots of creativity. One of the nuns in my parish decided she was going to start a children's choir. And so my mom signed me up for it. Sister said, we are not just going to sing hymns at Mass. We are going to sing songs, and I'm quoting her now, songs that are groovy. <laughs> now, this particular song, This Little Light of Mine, is really easy to learn, isn't it? And soon, we were singing along with so much gusto that sister told us to start clapping. Catholics clapping in church unheard of in the early 70s. And frankly, just after a couple of weeks of practice, we sounded really good. And sister went to the pastor and she said, these kids are really good. We have to put them at mass. We have to let them stand in front of the altar and sing. In the sanctuary, the pastor asked. Yes, the sister responded. And so sister got the pastor to agree that we would sing at the 11 o'clock mass on Sunday. And so on that Sunday, we all sat together in one section of the church 
So sister could keep an eye on us. And after communion, we all taken off the little side of the church so that we will be ready to come up to the altar to sing this little light of mine. We knew the song, and we were ready to go. We had everything memorized. But then, just as we were ready to go up to the altar, we discovered that sister had come up with a brilliant idea. She decided that this song would be enhanced if every child in the children's choir would hold a lighted candle, an eight-inch beeswax candle. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> and so as we walked up to the altar, she handed each one of us, the 25 of us, a lighted beeswax candle. Many of us had never been allowed to touch a candle before. And it's now our hands are shaking. The boys were in the second row, the girls on the front row. Our little hands were shaking because of the flames that are in our hands. But the music started, and so we could focus. And so we started singing, this little light of mine. And the boy standing next to me, he got so energetic in his singing that when he sang, I'm gonna let it shine, he blew out his candle. <laughs> and then he promptly started to cry. But no worries, the music got louder. And so we sang with gusto. But then the problem, when we practiced singing with gusto, we always started clapping our hands. And so that's what happened next. 25 young children started to clap their hands while holding lighted candles. Wax went flying. Candles fell to the ground. A spark caught the carpet on fire. It was put out by a Buster Brown shoe that somebody was wearing. And just as we were ready to start the second verse, everywhere I go, that's when it happened. A blood-curling scream from the other end of the choir where I was. A little boy on the second row had lit a little girl's hair on fire. The pastor yelled, get the fire extinguisher. Instead, someone grabbed the bowl of holy water and threw the whole thing at the little girl. <laughs> Total chaos. This is how bad it was. We forgot to take out the second collection. <laughs> As we left that church that day, the pastor and the nun were having a spirited conversation in the sacristy. Now, as I think back on this, when you are a little kid, this song and this gospel sounds so easy, doesn't it? You have God-given light in you, so let it shine, and then we can have some fun in the process. And then you grow up, and then you realize that what Jesus is asking in today's gospel is really hard. In a world that seems full of darkness in a lot of ways, Jesus says, I am sending you into that darkness so that you can be the light, so that people can see the good that you do and give glory to your heavenly Father. Jesus is sending every one of us into every place that appears to be filled with darkness different kinds of darkness darkness of anger of fear of poverty of mistrust and there is our christian calling to be the light which means to do what's right in those places when i was a child i didn't know what that would cost however when you're singing the song Letting your light shine sounds easy. And then you start to grow up. You become a teenager. You're at a party where there's underage drinking going on. You know it's wrong, but there's so much peer pressure to fit in. That's the darkness. 
And Jesus says, let your light shine. And then you grow up a little bit more, and you go to college. And on many college campuses, every social gathering centers on binge drinking and casual sex. You know that's wrong, but you ask yourself, how can I possibly make a difference to the whole campus culture? Jesus says, let your light shine. Then you grow up a little bit more, and you get hired. You realize you're hired by a company where there's a toxic work environment, where good people are mistreated, where injustice happens. It's a lot of darkness to deal with, and your instinct is to quit. But before you quit, you should ask, what would Jesus want me to do so that my light can shine? Lots of darkness to deal with chronic illness, serious diagnosis. Perhaps you have just experienced the sudden death of a loved one. Maybe you came to church today with fears about your marriage, with concerns about your children, with worries about your future. Darkness. And what's the gospel command? Let your light shine. Darkness to deal with. Addictions, anxieties, depression, pornography, political grown-ups acting like children. And if that's not enough, an ever-diminishing respect for life. Jesus calls us in today's gospel to that difficult daily vocation to be the light. Being the light in our family, even when it seems that nobody else cares. Being the light on the school campus, even when it seems nobody else believes. Being the light at work, even when we wonder why God wants us to stay there. Being the light as citizens and neighbors, even when we wonder if we can make a difference. This is the daily difficult sometimes dangerous vocation of being a Christian. But before we get depressed, let's remember that God never calls us to do the impossible. God never sets us up for failure. If God calls us to do something or to be someone, then he has already given us what we need to do it. We can do what Jesus asked us in today's gospel if we remember one thing, that in the end, any light that we have, any love that we have, any strength that we have, any energy that we have comes from God. In the gospel of John, Jesus says, and he's speaking about himself, I am the light of the world. So what's our vocation? Our vocation is to reflect his light. In the end, this little light of mine really isn't mine. It is the light of Jesus shining through me. He is the source. And so if you want to change the world for the better, if you want to demonstrate that there is an alternative to hatred, anger, and selfishness, if you want to continue the work that Jesus has begun, then I ask you this week to take one step out of whatever darkness that you are dealing with to be the light of Christ. Bask in his light. Soak in his light, then you will be ready to shine.